I said he had a knack for reviews. He's the hungry fairy. Hi, everybody. So today we're going to take a look at the KitchenAid Siphon Brewer. This is one of the few electric models out there. Traditionally, siphon brewing is done on an open flame powered by alcohol. There's a couple of other impractical methods that require halogen bulbs, but these are extremely expensive and difficult to use. So KitchenAid hopes to make siphon brewing a very common place in the home with this much easier system. Let's take a look inside. You have the brewing pot stand. You have the bottom plate with a short cord. This obviously is the power to craft. You have here the metal filter. You have the claw filter. Instructions. And please read the instructions. You also have the bottom carafe. It has a very nice weight. The glass is really heavy. And you have the nice clear markings on the side. It comes with a brush slash scoop. A lid for the craft and a brewing unit. And lastly, the most important, impressive piece, the brewing chamber. It's thick glass, a metal tube, it's nicely made. All the plastic feels nice and heavy. The handle has a nice soft grip. And obviously it goes directly into the holder. So the first thing you gotta do is heat up water. And this is to prepare the filter. The directions recommend that you boil the filter for at least five minutes. After the five minutes, I just fish the filter out and cool it down with cool water. According to the directions, you're supposed to place the filter over the metal filter and then tighten the string over it. I found this to be very tedious. Okay, you can see the filter up close. You have to make sure that the strings are tight. So just to let you guys know, the water is roughly about 75 degrees. And the craft chamber is roughly about 79 degrees. In goes the water. I filled the craft up to the top limit, which is about eight cups. Um, place the brewing chamber. Now there's a magnet here but you have to make sure it is a good seal. You also have to make sure that the filter is on really tight. For it to be tight, you have to turn it where you hear the click. Otherwise, during the brewing process, the filter is just gonna pop off like this. 
and it will make a huge mess. Okay, so back to this, I place the lid on top. I set the stopwatch and mark. Also, there's an LED light on the side, by the way. Super speed. Blub, 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 blub. Now what's happening is the water is boiling. It creates pressure that pushes the water up the pipe into the brewing chamber. Now once it reaches a certain point, the lever is going to pop up, the bottom chamber is going to cool, and the water is going to rush down. And then you got to wait for this cool part. Pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to take the top chamber off and take a temperature reading for you guys. It's pretty hot. I can feel the steam off of my hand and it's pretty much burning me. It's a nice 194 degrees. Okay, so let's make coffee for real. Again, make sure the filter is tight. Otherwise, you're gonna have a ruined pot and then you're gonna have to start over. In the instruction manual, it does give you a sample of how coarse the grinds are and it also gives you your measurements. As you can see, KitchenAid uses its own measurement for cups. I'm going to make the largest batch here, which is eight cups, which requires 73.9 grams of coffee. I shake it a little to even it out. Super speed. Again, even though there's a magnet, you still have to make sure there's a good seal. It does take a little bit of effort to find a good seal point. The magnet does help you, but you still have to search around for it. Once you find a spot, the magnet will pull it into place. Super speed. Now I'm gonna go back to normal speed over here really quick. I want you to see that there is a separation of grinds. This is a good sign. And you do see that the grinds do mix in with the hot water. So the stirring is not required. Once the machine turns off, the temperature will decrease. Once the temperature decreases, a vacuum is created in the bottom carafe. This vacuum will suck the liquid from the top brewing chamber. And remember, there's a filter in place, so only will bring down the liquid coffee, leaving the grinds on top. And again, you see the coffee come down and it looks pretty cool. So all you gotta do is just take the brewing chamber off, place it on the stand, take the lid, and pop it on the craft. I let the coffee cool down a little bit before pouring it out. As you can see with the cloth filter, it pours a very clean looking coffee. There's no grit or anything. You see that a lot of oils still remain in the cup of coffee. This process actually surprised me. It created a very bright, clean, and crisp tasting coffee, and it shows a lot of the complex flavors from the brew. This is one of my favorite cups of coffee from an automated machine. Taste-wise, I highly recommend this machine.
First thing you notice that when cleaning out the pot, the coffee grinds are very dry. This is due to the vacuum action that occurs. Compared to a traditional coffee machine, this is a pain in the ass to clean. Compared to a regular siphon machine, it's about the same. Obviously, you have a big bowl that you have to clean. It's not dishwasher safe. Coffee gets in the stand, you have to clean that too. There's all these little spots for the water to hide in. It does take some time to dry. There's heating elements in a craft, so you can't submerge it into water. Now, there's a problem with the top. Water doesn't necessarily come out easily. Also, my hand can't go in there. So you definitely have to use the brush. My normal sponge doesn't fit in there either. Now, the filter is not so bad. All you do is just rinse it off. And the coffee pretty much comes off. You can undo the strings and just rinse the cloth with soap. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Post them down there. When you get a chance, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.